Hello, everybody, and welcome to PBK Case Files. Today, we're going to talk about actually getting back into investigations and the wonderful, happy time we're having with it. Uh, now, we've had to take a little bit of a sabbatical. We are back. Uh, we're going to try and be doing this at least once a week. So lately, an opportunity came along to get inside the old Klondike building uh, here in St. Helens. Now, we've talked about the Klondike before, and the investigation that we did that was for a charity event. Well, so far, we've done the basement twice in a public-led investigation. Last night, we ended up having the spirit box go off in a 15-minute tirade with the same voice. And it was... I mentioned a name... of one of the investigators who had come through before. And the interesting thing is, it was Ed and Lorraine Warren. It was Lorraine Warren who actually came. Uh, this was back in 2010. And when she was on the show, State, doing the investigation from the Klondike, she was saying that there was a dark spirit. Well, in everything that we've encountered, we've had a grumpy old man spirit. Now, the interesting part about this entire thing is we were in between tour groups. So I bring up Lorraine Warren, and I'm asking the spirit about Lorraine Warren. And I said, hey, Lorraine Warren says that there's an evil spirit here. Are you an evil spirit? That started a 15-minute tirade where the spirit box was not stopping, which is rare to have that. I mean, normally you'll get a sentence or two or three, but a 15-minute tirade is kind of unheard of. This thing was pulling out sounds from horror movies to play against us. The sound would crescendo. It would come up, and it would get really loud, and it would back off. And then you'd have all this other sounds. and it, The spirit was basically telling us to get the hell out. And they even, they even said that. Leave. Run. I'll kill you. Well, we ended up having a bit of an argument. A bit of a dispute between me and him. The temperature in the area that we were in in the basement actually dropped by three degrees. And we documented this. Two feet to our left, it was 71. Two feet to our right, it was 71 degrees. Two feet in front of us, it was 71 degrees. Where we were standing was three degrees colder. And like I said, we were able to document this, that the temperature changed radically. For the entire 15-minute tirade, the temperature dropped. This continued on and on and on. Well, now, see, here's the wonderful, happy thing about this. Shadows were coming out of the walls and moving in our field of vision. We had laser lights set up so that we could see if anything broke the laser grids, which they were doing. Again, this went on for 15 minutes. We had the next group come down. And it only consisted of two different people on this one. As I'm attempting to give a back story and I'm trying to discuss the history of the Klondike with these people, the spirit is still talking on the spirit box. I had to take the two people, the man and the woman, and walk away so we could have our discussion. Because this spirit, this old man, was not happy with us. And continually, continually kept coming at us over and over and over again with a lot of 
words that are not appropriate for public consumption. Now, the tour guide is one of the bartenders at the new Klondike. He was over there, and I basically passed off. I said, listen, you talk to the spirits. I need to do this. So as he's over there talking and discussing matters, he's asking, I'm the bartender. What what do you want us to pour for you? Because that was one of the things that the spirit had been asking for was something to drink. It wanted alcohol. Out of the spirit box came a shot of whiskey and a shot of vodka. And then continued on, berating, yelling, letting everybody in the room know it was there. So the bartender goes up. This is unknown to me at the time. I'm still discussing matters, shouting at the box from time to time to shut up, drop it, leave it alone. Because we're still getting those hostile messages. Now this is not provoking. So for those people who think I'm provoking a spirit. The spirit's already been provoking. We've asked it nicely. We've tried to give it respect. Now it is, listen, you need to knock it off. You need to stop. This is getting out of hand. You're not going to scare us. You're not going to make things worse for us. We're not leaving. Knock it off. So as all this is transpiring, the bartender has gone upstairs to the other bartender on duty, who's not a tour guide, and has asked for him to pour a shot of vodka and a shot of whiskey. Like I said, I did not know they were going to go do this. At the time both shots were poured and slid down the bar, activity in the basement stopped. The cold bubble left. The shadows dissipated. Everything went quiet. After the group was done, the bartender came down and said, Listen, this is really creepy because this thing would not shut up until I went upstairs and I asked for the guy to pour two shots of whiskey and vodka. Now, of course, I had to go up and take a picture of two shot glasses because at this point, it's, it's evidence. It works. But the crazy thing is, when we went up there to get those pictures, the bartender on duty, it was already closed. He had already drank them. I suggested, listen, you need to pour two more shots stat and put them back in the spot and leave them. Now, this wasn't for their protection. At this point, this was my protection because of the fact that we have talked to these spirits and this spirit is pissed off. We have told him, we'll we'll leave you some shots. And now the bartender has drank in those shots that were offerings that should be left overnight at least or until everyone's ready to leave. So I told my team, we need to leave, we need to leave now. Not that I'm scared, but we pushed our luck a lot. We need to leave. So we have one more weekend of doing the Klondike. The new owner seems to be very much intrigued into his building, his ghosts, and that hopefully that we'll be able to get in there someday with him so that maybe he can understand his ghost better. Because maybe if everybody understands everybody in that building, living and dead, maybe everybody can actually live in harmony. Now I know he said he's had a sensation of almost being pushed down the staircase from upstairs. He's heard Shouts. He's heard his name. He's heard a loud puff when he was upstairs next to his face. So maybe if the ghosts understood, maybe if we can get them all together in a big old peace rally and sit down with the box and let him talk to them and them talk to him 
And that way they'll understand that he's trying to restore the building to its former glory. He doesn't want them gone. So we don't need an exorcism on this one. But maybe, just maybe, if everybody can get on the same page, and everybody understands everybody, then maybe everybody living and dead could make the Klondike Even better than it was before. I thank everybody for uh, tuning in. We're going to try and do more of these every week. And then hopefully we'll actually get some guests on here. Because that way it's not just me droning on. Anyway, everybody. Enjoy your October. November's around the corner. Bigger and better things are coming up. More investigations are starting to pop up and appear, so hopefully there will be more DBK case files.